Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I'm gonna to be going over all the coolest stuff that I have handled in 2021. I, can't, I handled a lot of stuff. There was a lot of meh this year, but there, was, there were some really cool things. Uh, this video is gonna consist of knives that were uh, uh, not, not necessarily available, but were released in 2021, at least in prototype form. Uh, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. Some of these are gonna be knives that you can absolutely get. They're production knives. Some of them are knives that you cannot get right? Because they're either rare or uh, they are not released in production form yet. They're prototypes. So I'm just going to be talking about everything that I really, really liked uh, in 2021. Towards the end of the year, I'll do a much more structured video where I put everything together, categorize it, and tell you guys what the best of the best is. Uh, but for now, we're going to do it like this. I'm going to be including video footage so you guys can watch. The video footage is from previous reviews. So if you want to go back and watch a comprehensive review of each item, you can absolutely do that. Uh, everything that is available, I will link right down in the description so you guys can check that out. If you use my links, it absolutely helps me, but that's 100% totally up to you. Thanks to my generous patrons who are supporting me. There's a link for Patreon right down below, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and start off with some inexpensive stuff. We're going to move quickly. This Avivi Imperium, definitely still on the list. This isn't necessarily a, wow, they reinvented the wheel, right? But the Imperium is cool. It's a front flipper, uh, thumb stud opener. This is an inexpensive knife. This is a knife that you can get right now in multiple forms. Uh, definitely recommendable. Civivi bothers me with their clip goose bill thing, but it, this it's just a generically good knife, right? Uh, it's a little less Civivi than the other Civivis, just given its semi-unique nature of being a front flipper, but it's easily still a knife that I can recommend, and it's definitely one of the coolest things that they have released in 2021. They have a few more things that I have not handled yet, but I'm gonna try uh, to get my hands on them soon. Um, so yeah, the Imperium is still on here. Another knife from CVV that is also still uh, one of my favorites for 2021 is the Keen Nadar, uh, or Nad, or however you wanna pronounce that. This guy's a little bit more beefy, which is not uh, consistent with other Civivi knives. Now, what that does is create for a less than optimal, uh, you know, cutting ability or slicing ability, but it's still plenty sharp. It's also a compound recurve, which is good in some situations and bad in other situations. The reason that I like this is because it's just different. It's cool. It just has a little bit more personality versus some of the other Civivi knives uh, that are available. Now, Civivi does a good job. They cater to a wide range of people with designs that are straightforward and simple, but Sometimes me and other people get bored with that. So the Key Nadar uh, is a welcome uh, addition to their lineup. Uh, it's also pretty inexpensive and using pretty good materials, right? So yeah, happy with that. Uh, moving on, another knife that's also still on this list that's also very inexpensive and very recommendable. Honestly, I kind of I feel like it's underrated for 2021. I feel like it was it should have been a bigger deal. This the uh, CRKT uh, Pilar Three, the one and the two, the the two was. The not, you know, the Pilar 3 is excellent. It's not just like, wow, it's that much better than the one and the two. It's substantial, it's a really good budget knife. The only downside to this being that it is a steel frame lock, which is kind of the, but the, the design, the knife itself, the ease of manipulation, the materials, all of that fit and finish, great. Pilar 3, massive thumbs up. This is easily one of the best budget knives of 2021. Uh, this is an easy one to add to your collection too, right? Whether you want, you know, a junk drawer knife, you want a beater, you want a, you know, dedicated EDC, you want something to throw in your vehicle, right? Of course, if it's legal. Um, yeah, the Pilar 3, oh my gosh, this is a wonderful knife. Moving on here. Uh, yeah, I know that this knife, the design did not come out in 2021. Uh, this is uh, an upgraded version of it. The new Adamas, right? Now I'm including the large Adamas and the new mini Adamas. The mini Adamas definitely came out in 2021 as far as I remember. Um, the main thing here is, is that even the, the bigger one it has been, they've, they've changed it dimensionally. It's a little bit thinner, a little, it makes a little bit more sense. I'm just really happy that they upgraded this thing to crew wear. Um, this thing always felt like it had a lot of potential, but it was just hovering and it was just sitting there in D2, right? This is an expensive knife. It's, it's a hard knife to get right now, especially the manual one. Um, but wow, this is, uh, this is definitely one of my favorite things that I've handled in 2021. I love this. It's such a mega pounder of a knife, right? Even the little one. It's pretty thick and kind of ridiculous behind the edge, but it's in crew wear. 
Um, definitely a robust geometry. You can definitely beat on this thing. Um, I uh, yeah, I remember the uh, uh, the the older Adamus being you know obviously mega super ultra durable, but it was just like okay, it's kind of like why is it so? It's just unbelievably thick, right? Um, which is it's kind of fun, but. They pulled the the bigger Adamas back to a more like just more reasonable dimensions. The, mainly the addition of the crew wear, that's that was a big deal. Definitely, definitely, definitely one of my favorite things that just come out in uh, 2021. Both the large and small Adamas or mini Adamas. Moving on here, the A Purpose Zerks Integral or Integral, however you'd like me to say that. I'll probably say both every single time. Um, yeah, one of the best <coughs> excuse me, one of the best price integrals we have ever seen. Uh, these are not made in the United States, but wow, one piece titanium, if you didn't know, for the handle scales, it's all one piece of titanium, which definitely costs more money. Usually when we see an integral knife, even if it's not made in the United States, it's running 450 plus. Uh, this guy had a pretty decent price on it. If I'm not mistaken, you can still get this knife. Um, I think it's available in just a few places. Yeah, wow, this is, this is great. It's a wonderful, wonderful knife. Great fit and finish, great action, great materials, all of that, but I, what were these available for at base? $350, something like that? I might get the prices wrong. There's a lot of information on this list, but wow, really, really impressive. Really kind of an unsung hero of 2021. I know that it was popular. I know people know about it, but I'm just saying, man, for an integral or integral, this is an excellent knife. Moving on here, one that people are going to be, some people are going to be frustrated to put on the list, but it's on the list. You're just going to have to deal with it. It's here. <laughs> <laughs> the Demco 8020.5. But the materials, the materials, meh. Yeah, it's using injection mold plastic and Austin A, which is not like, wow, you know, it's <laughs> definitely, there's nothing shiny about the materials here. I understand that, right? If your foundational level of value is materials and that's all that you're judging the thing off of, then you're probably gonna be kind of salty that it's on this list. I'm judging this knife for, uh, the number one, the fact that we got a production version of the Shark Lock at all is pretty cool, right? I think more so what I'm excited about is the implication behind this because obviously, obviously they're going to evolve this, obviously. Uh, <laughs> just, there's going to be different versions of this thing. There's, there's going to be different steels and different handle materials, right? Flytanium's working on titanium scales for this thing. It's going to evolve. This is, it's just is, you're just gonna have to deal with it. It is on the list. Absolutely, the AD 20.5. I have one, I use it all the time. This is a wonderful knife. I wish the materials were better, right? You know, oh, it's $150 for all today in plastic. I'm the first one to ever complain about it. Like, yeah, they, everybody, everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. We all want it to be in a better steel. We all want it to be in better material. I get it. The thing itself, the fact that it exists makes me happy, the implication, right? It is definitely one of the coolest things I've handled in 2021. <laughs> Moving on here, uh, the uh, this is oh, absolutely this is in the running for best of the best. I'm just going to tell you guys this right now: the Vero Engineering Isotope. Wow, uh, this is to date the coolest integral knife that I have ever handled. Um, the one that I'm showing here is mine. This is uh, one of very few that was in Damascus. Uh, the standard ones come in micarta or G10 inlays, I can't remember. This is a wonderfully designed knife. This is, it's one of the most beautiful knives I have ever seen. Now, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Uh, it depends on what, if you, if you like a simpler look. The one that you're seeing here looks like really complicated and flashy. Just understand, there's more basic versions of it that give it that more clean aesthetic, right? Uh, this is it, it just wonderful. These are these were uh, made by Best Tech, designed by Joseph Vero, but made by Best Tech. And I think Best Tech really, in my eyes, got an opportunity to show off exactly how capable they are as an OEM. For the longest time, to me, it seemed like nobody can touch Riot. And then here comes Best Tech doing the Vero Isotope for Vero Engineering, and I was like, what, what? incredible master master level inlay work master level action right finish work all of that um uh, it's one of the only truly perfect knives in my collection i mean that like under a magnifying glass this thing is perfect the vero isotope expensive right uh base price on these guys was 500 bucks the one that you're seeing here was more than that definitely but 
uh, one thing, getting your hands on it, right? This, uh, this list is not based on available. It's not like it has to be absolutely available, right? We've seen everything come in and out of stock. It would be impossible for me to make a list of knives that were absolutely available all the time. Not gonna be a thing in, in, uh, in 2021. It's just not gonna be, right? Unless you want me to do the entire list just based on Civivi knives, right? Which wouldn't be any fun. Moving on here, the Wii Esprit. For the longest time, we had nothing that I was like, wow, neat, right? It's just, sometimes I would find a you know design that was you know being pushed as like released from the designer on their own page or their own on Instagram and I find out the OEM is we, right? But we, we released this, uh, the We Esprit by Ray Laconico. Oh, wow, yes. Uh, orange peel, textured titanium, nice size, nice weight, nice balance, thumb stud opener, nice clean aesthetic, right? Has that Laconico look without being like, oh, wow, he made the same thing that he always, I like Ray Laconico designs. I'm just saying, it's like the, for, a, for a while, a lot of the stuff was like, wow, another knife that's exactly the same thing with this ever so slight variation. No, the Esprit was cool. Yeah, it's a simple frame lock running on bearings, 20 CV slash M390, I can't remember what it is, and titanium. Just real classy, nice knife. Wish I had more of a 3D milled clip. It's got kind of the basic, kind of what, what, what we've been doing here, just throwing a basic clip on it, but wow. Nice knife. I think you can, I think, can you still get this? I'm not sure. I'll link it down below if you can. Moving on here. More so, more so, not not so much the knife, because the knife has been around forever, but it's what they did, right? So I'm kind of cheating here. Um, specifically, the thing that I'm excited about is Protex Sapphire Blue DLC finish. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So many people are like, that makes it look gas station. That makes it look gas station. I'm not gonna let gas station knives dictate what is or isn't cool. The gas station knives themselves are not cool, right? They come in a bunch of different colors. It's not that colors are cringy because gas station knives exists, exist. Gas station knives are a continuous, a perpetual copy of things that are interesting in the knife world, right? So I'm not gonna let the fact that some gas station knives are really colorful take away from my joy of nice knives that happen to have some type of color associated with them. No, uh, the Sapphire Blue DLC finish is amazing, gorgeous, has that high reflectivity to it, nice evenness, but most importantly, it's an actual DLC finish, meaning there's durability. There are, it adds elements of performance and protection to the blade. Wow, I can't wait to see what they do with this. A lot of people are gonna say, I want them to add that to the Malibu. I bet they will. I hope they do. It depends on what the steel is, I'm sure, right? How well it bonds or applies? I don't know. I don't I don't do this type of stuff. Yeah, the one that you're seeing here is on the Godfather, right? The Godfather, the blue DLC Godfather came out in 2021. The Godfather itself did not. It was that's a much older model. They've only applied it to the TR3 and Godfather so far. We need a rock eye, right? We need an SBR, we need a Malibu. And countless other things. They need to do a dark angel. Oh, 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 a dark angel in the in the sapphire blue DLC. Oh, oh, I feel so bad for people who've never watched my channel or are watching right now. Going, what the what? What is going? What is wrong with this guy? Anyway, sapphire blue DLC from Protech. Wonderful. Moving on here. This is also cheating because there's not a production version of this yet. I get to handle the prototype Dawn from TW Price Designs. What? <laughs> what? This, the, the guy who designed this is 20. Uh, and that's not saying that like anybody who's 20 is not capable of designing something amazing. Obviously not. Um, but I think more impressive is this was the first design he ever did. The first design he ever did. Uh, yeah, the production version of this, I am almost certain will be a grand slam. Not made in the United States, foreign made knife. Um, but uh, wow, wonderful, beautiful texturing, the lines, everything. Uh, this is kind of a, uh, it's like a sort of new, it's like a modern front flipper, kind of Sabenza-esque looking thing, but it runs on bearings, has a nice clip. I, there's just, there's so much I like about this knife. This was a prototype. There's a couple of things that are gonna be altered, including the um, lockup geometry, the, uh, by basically the, the harshness of the of the texturing, right? A couple of other things, little things, uh, but this is beautiful. And uh, I have no doubt in my mind that um, people will pick this up 
when a production version of it is available. But even in its prototype form, absolutely one of the coolest knives that I handled in 2021. Okay, let's move on to some other stuff. Some stuff that's not really fair to put on this list, but I'm also going to go ahead and do it because whatever. Number one, I have to put Herman Knives on this list, even though everything that I've handled on this channel did not come out in 2021. I think it's either the Ovium or the Ishtar. What you're seeing here is a totally different model. You're probably seeing my custom, which is a Dragonfly. Um, that did not come out in 2021, but I know that it's either the Ovium or the Ishtar that came out in 2021, and I've got both of them coming in uh, for me to take a look at. Uh, Herman knives in general just absolutely slap me silly for 20, like just ridiculous. If you're gonna spend six, seven, eight hundred dollars, uh, it's hard to beat Herman. It's really hard to beat. Like they are just killing it with everything. And you know what? If you want to spend two, three, four grand, you <laughs> this is also great. They're also great, right? Bartosz Herman or Her yeah, Bartosz Herman. Uh, wow, Polish custom knives. That's the only place you can get them. So yeah, um, Herman knives in general, you have to just include them on the list, even though I, the stuff I've looked at is all, all not released in 2021. Moving on here, this is also kind of unfair because apparently they're never gonna make it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I believe that, but apparently he said, the, the Demco brothers have said, no, we're not gonna, we're not actually gonna make this. The 8020 compact, I was certain that this was gonna be a real thing. Not necessarily like a production, like, a semi-production, but through them. Basically have the MG or the machine ground 8020s. I handled a custom, a custom, obviously all the ones that exist are custom and there's very few. Um, this is a uh, shorter version of the 8020. This one was in full titanium and full thickness, which I loved. Oh God, this thing was so good. It broke my heart to hear that they were like, nah, we're not gonna do this exactly. Well, I was like, why? You know, um, this is, I mean, despite the fact that this was basically, they I don't know if they made 10 or 20 of them, and apparently they're not going to make them. It's still one of the coolest things that I have handled in 2020. Now, will they do a compact version of the 8020 production, like a smaller, maybe they'll do a, I think maybe they got a slim or something. I don't know. I'm sure they'll do a smaller one, but they'll probably thin it up. I like this beefy boy. I want it in the same dimensions that my larger ones are in, right? Anyways. Whatever they decide to do with this, the 8020 Compact is one of the coolest things that I've handled here. Uh, definitely still on the list, even though it is impossible to, you'll, we'll never be able to get this. Nobody will ever be able to get this again unless it is, uh, you know, a secondary. Uh, the Shirogorov Russian Overkill, and that's a collab with RJ Martin. Wow. Wow. Uh, you want details on this guy? Go watch my review. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. This is one of the most beautiful things I have ever seen. Uh, what are they going for in the secondary market? Last I heard between $2,300 and $2,500. Ooh, oh, gosh, that's a lot of, that's a lot of money. But man, I'll never, I'm never gonna own this. Um, but wow, beautiful. One of the, one of the nicest knives that I have ever handled in my life. One of the most beautiful things that I've ever handled. I think this guy was an M398. Uh, nice steel. Not a steel that is exclusive to the $2,500 territory, but wow. Well, I think that was my first example of M398 ever. Um, definitely. Okay, moving on to a knife that I am certain will be, eventually be available. One that you guys have not seen the review of yet, um, but it's coming. I'll show you a little bit of footage here. Uh, the Koenig Mini Arias. So these were prototypes. This is the one that you're seeing here is a prototype that was sent into me from somebody who picked it up at a show. Um, yeah, the production versions of these will absolutely, uh, they will do unbelievably well. And they will, they're, everybody knows, these are just going to fly off of the shelves at retailers. They're probably going to come in in batches of 10 and be gone in a heartbeat. I have no idea what the base price is going to be for these. My guess is about around $600. It's, it's the Arius, but a mini one. They did not skip out on the action, uh, despite it being a smaller, thinner blade, right? Gravity obviously will affect how, you know, smooth and slick the action feels. No, this thing is literally just a scaled down Arius. And if they do a non-flipper version of these with a nice size choil, right? Which I, I think just the standard choil and they just, well, maybe they need to add, add a little, I can't remember what I said in the review. You can go, it, once it finally comes out, you can watch it. Um, yeah, non-flipper version of the mini Arius will be, undoubtedly will be uh, a lot of people's ultimate EDC. 
there is so much that they do right with the Arius, the large size one. One of the only issues for some people is the size. A smaller one solves that issue for a lot of people. I like a bigger knife, but if I can get a full four finger grip on a smaller one, yeah, I'm gonna, a lot of times I'm gonna opt for that. With this guy, I need it to not have a flipper tab, but I'm sure that they'll do that eventually because they did it with the larger one. Easily, one of the nicest, coolest things that I handled in 2021. I know this video was all over the place, right? Not a traditional, you know, it, for this channel, even the stuff that is structured really isn't that structured, but I did not do this in a traditional way, and that's because the final, right, the award ceremony will always has like a specific structure to it. So I wanted to kind of update everybody on where my, you know, where I was with everything that I'd handled. Obviously, I don't have the ability to handle everything, even as a channel that, you know, does... Uh, two uploads a day, literally. What is that? 365 times two, uh, 730, I don't know, seven, whatever 365 times two is. I'm not going to try to do it in my head because I can't. Uh, yeah, even somebody who's putting out that much content, handling that much stuff, there's, it's just not possible for me to handle everything. But of the stuff that I handled and some of the stuff that I didn't handle, this seems to be the coolest stuff. This is all the stuff that brought me the most joy, that brought me the most, you know, that, that, created the, the biggest sort of rise in energy and excitement, right? So, uh, at the very least, I hope that you guys found this video um, mildly entertaining. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at mental underscore complex. Like I said, there are links in the description. When you use those links, it helps me. So I would greatly appreciate it. But as always, that is entirely up to you. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. If you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that middle complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.